this video, we're going to look at three things to look out for in any questions about experiments. So uh, I'm focusing on three common uh, mistakes that students usually make uh, and to suggest some standard answers that you could try uh, to include uh, when you're answering these questions. So the first one we're going to look at is uh, control versus control variables. So you may be familiar with variables. We've got independent variables, dependent variables, and control variables. So independent variables, quick recap, would be things that uh, you change for the experiment to see this fact. The dependent variables would be the results, whereas the control variables are factors to, that we need to keep the same throughout the entire experiment. And the point of this is to ensure there is high validity for your results. So the idea is that if you keep these things the same, then it wouldn't affect the results itself. But if you change these things or these things are not actually kept the same, they will actually affect the result that you get, which is your dependent variable. So in order to make sure that you can actually say your results are valid, you must ensure control variables are kept the same. Whereas a control setup is entirely different. So the control setup is a setup without the independent variable. And the whole point is to compare it with the other setups with, with the actual independent variable. So the idea is to say that, you know, the any result that we observe is because I'm changing something within the experiment and the result is not due to any original uh, material or equipment that was used in this entire process. So as an example, if we are doing an experiment to look at the effects of auxins, uh, then, um, or specifically the different concentration of auxins on the growth of a plant, then the control setup would be a plant that is, um, uh, that does not have any auxins in it, right? So it will be a plant that will have, let's say, uh, water that was applied to it, whereas the other plants would have different concentrations of auxin solutions applied to it. So that is a control setup to show that water itself will not actually cause the effect. Whereas the control variables in that scenario would be, let's say, you're using the same volume of solutions and water, or the same age, same length, and same species of plants, or the same soil pH, same temperature, same light intensity, same carbon dioxide concentration, etc. So anything that will actually impact the growth of the actual plant would be a control variable. So be very careful. They would like to ask you sometimes where they give you a scenario like that and then ask you what is the purpose of this uh, particular setup that does not have the independent variable. Then you answer saying it's to compare it with the other setups with the independent variable. So the next thing that we're going to look at will be the difference between these three words, which often confuse people so much in exam questions. So uh, for any experimental questions that you get, they do sometimes like to ask you, uh, can you suggest different ways to improve the reliability or to improve the validity or to uh, improve the accuracy of your data? Um, and people tend to mix them up completely, but it's really important to recognize there are completely different things. And here are some of the answers that you could include uh, to help you get the marks. So first of all is reliability. So the concept of reliability is uh, because you have got multiple data or multiple repeats to back up your uh, calculations basically so that your calculation is not skewered or is not uh, affected by a random error or random chance so how do we improve the reliability of your data so there are generally few ways so one of the most basic thing is you've got to do repeats right or replicate your experiments so not only that but you need to make sure make sure you do repeats uh, with your measurements so it's probably better to say, uh, repeat your measurements. So the idea is that you're not repeating the whole experiment necessarily. It might be, let's say you are taking multiple measurements for each interval all right, or each setup that you are using. So let's say if you're using a photosynthesis practical, you're changing the distance between the lamp and the pond weed, then you might say you're taking multiple measurements at each interval, uh, each distance uh, between the lamp and the pond weed. So from that repeated measurements, you need to make sure you can then calculate a mean that you could use for comparisons. But before that, you also need to make sure you can identify and also ignore any anomalies 
that is in the uh, repeated measurements. So sometimes you would see that one of them is completely out of the trend. It could be, you know, due to random errors, random issues. So you just got to make sure that you are ignoring it, right? We are not going to remove the anomalies, but it simply means that when you're calculating the mean, you are not including that within the calculation. Sometimes when it comes to um, other bigger sort of measurements, so let's say, for example, sampling or drug testing, uh, other ways to improve the reliability of those results would be to have a large sample size. So uh, sometimes they might even like you to actually give an example of how big the sample size would be. Uh, but the idea is that you need to say, okay, you're actually collecting multiple measurements. So it's kind of linking to the concept of repeating, but now you're actually collecting data from loads and loads of locations or loads and loads of people. So it makes your results or your mean calculation or standard deviation more reliable. So the next thing we're going to look at is how do we improve the validity of that? So similar to what I mentioned earlier about the control variables for validity, it's very much about standardization. So you would need to make sure you include some control variables that and stating that you're going to keep them the same. So as I mentioned in the previous bit, like same concentration, same length, same mass, etc. So actually, um, these are usually two mark questions. So if you can name two control variables that you're keeping the same, that's pretty much two marks. Another way to think of it is also to standardize your procedures. So again, this one links to, let's say, sampling uh, when you're collecting transect sampling or systematic or random sampling. Uh, you would need to specify how you are making sure you're collecting data in the exact same way. So it could be, let's say, for example, you are placing the quadrat with the bottom left corner of the quadrat on the coordinate. Or you can say, oh, you are trying to um, capture animals or small insects as part of your sampling. So you are describing how you are standardizing the way that you use the sweep net or standardizing the way that you use the pooters, etc or the osmosis practical, you are standardizing exactly how you're going to blot the potato cylinder after the experiment. So let's say you're rolling the potato cylinder um, three times on the uh, tissue paper, something along those lines to show that you are trying to keep things done in the exact same way to ensure that any results you collected is valid. So those are two ways to increase or maintain validity of your experiment. Then finally, for accuracy, um, this is one. This one is about um, how close your collect uh, your measurements is actually to how close it is to the actual data itself. There is no way to be absolutely sure that your data is one hundred percent accurate, but we can have a uh, few ways to increase the accuracy of that. So one way is to have uh, to use smaller intervals. So the idea of this is, let's say, for example. It's better to, uh, instead of using um, 0, 1, 2, and 3 um, as whatever your concentration or whatever it might be, don't use that. Instead, you would use 0, then 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, etc. instead. So you are actually using small intervals, ensuring you're collecting more data in between so that you can, uh, you can make sure you get a, a value that is closer to the actual thing. Another method is to use uh, any equipment with higher resolutions. So what I mean by that is um, in the most simplistic way, let's say you're trying to measure the length of something uh, rather than using a when you're using a ruler, rather than using one with the smallest interval being one millimeter. Don't use that. See if you can find another more accurate ruler that has intervals uh, as small as 0 0.5 millimeters instead. So by doing that, you are making sure that your measurements are uh, are more close to the accurate thing rather than having one that's in between. So having equipment with higher resolutions would allow you to measure those in betweens that you couldn't do. So if you're using anything that with that has a lower resolution. So this is a very typical exam question that comes up that is usually worth two to three marks. So that's why it's really important to make sure you know uh, how to improve each and every one of these. You are not going to be asked to define them, but you will be asked to explain how to improve reliability, validity, or accuracy, or how can you ensure that you're collecting data that is reliable or valid or accurate. So make sure you know these three things. Finally, um, some reminders of wordings to use.
So it's very typical that people use certain specific words in the uh, in their answers. So some of the words to avoid would be one of the number one word to avoid would be the word amount. So many people tend to say, oh, the amount of potatoes or the amount of water, uh, amount of minerals to use. Don't ever say the word amount because the amount could mean many, many different things. In the same concept, don't use the word uh, how much, right? So people say, oh, you just got to make sure you keep uh, the same amount of water or uh, you need to be aware of how much water you're putting into this thing. Again, it's too vague sometimes and in the mark schemes, they in the mark scheme guidance, they will specifically tell examiners to ignore the use of these words. Um, so it's really important to be aware of what words to use instead. So here's a list of words that you can use instead. So for example, you can say the concentration, right? So you can say the concentration of um, sodium bicarbonate solutions rather than saying the amount of solutions to use. Um, similarly, if it's about uh, how heavy something is, you can use the word mass. Sometimes they may accept the word weight. Uh, I mean, obviously there is a difference between those two, but again, it's better to specify using these words rather than using the word amount. You could also say, let's say length, right? So let's say that you're keeping the length of the plant the same, not just saying the amount of plant, which doesn't make much sense anyways. And finally, if it's something that is distinct, then you can say, uh, I'm going to use the number, right? So for example, let's say I'm using it, keeping the number of pea plants the same, rather than saying I'm keeping the amount of plants used in the experiment the same, right? So you can say number, which makes it a lot more specific. Another one would be uh, volume, right? So the volume of solutions, rather than saying amount of solutions, this is another classic one that people tend to miss out on. Um, so be very careful, try as much as you can to avoid using the words amount or how much, try to use the list on the right hand side instead. Obviously, sometimes, you know, you might forget that and that's okay. But when you check your answers, just be careful. If you can, try to use some of the words on the right instead of the words amount or how much. So here are the three things to look out for in any questions about experiments. Again, I'm picking these three things because they are the most common things that students mix up on in exam questions. So as long as you focus and remember these things, you should be able to actually get those extra few marks that you normally might lose um, otherwise. So control and control variables are different. Be aware of what they do. They do like to ask you the purpose of a control setup. So you need to be able to name and say, this is a control, which is then used to compare with uh, other setups. That's two marks, basically. How to increase, re increase reliability, validity and accuracy. You can see that for each of them, there are at least two to three uh, things that you could say. So make sure you mention those things as well. And finally, with the wordings, be very careful. Don't use the word amount, but make sure you use uh, specific quantities instead, like concentration or volume or mass uh, instead of that. And these are the things to be aware of in experiment questions.